Blog Talk Radio. Oh my God, that is so him. Did you see him? That clearly I see her. That guy right there. Yeah, yeah, that one with the feathers. Oh my God, isn't he so beautiful? He's just so dreamy, you know? And I really love being around him. He's absolutely fabulous. It's just that, you know, every time I talk to him, he's just about this black talk, you know? Everything he says is just so black. It's just like black, 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 black. I mean, I don't even, you know, know what to say to him sometimes. It's like, so black, and it's black people, and it's black stuff, and it's black hair, and it's black thing. I mean, it sometimes drives me crazy. Do you know what I mean, Sally? I mean, I mean, do you? I that black song, get you out in white song. Can't walk, put your tongue back in like a bean song. Open up, let us sit down. We be about that div again. We be about that major move. Ain't think about no extra friends. Sound that top of the down. People come from out the round. I make this white folks talk the frown. Because they know when it tips it down. I'm a type of nigga, burn the whole shit down. Wear that crown on my head. Maybe maroon, maybe red. Maybe Barack, oh, maybe fed. Most act live when they really dead. Beta Satan, they be waiting. Wanna eat the food before you get it on the plate and just say it's taking a cent. They oaks on empty books. A society based on looks. Lucifer cooks the books. But I'm proof that by the door. Call me that no more. Navigate that seven seas, crusade is all they need Call me that black or pope, I sell these crackers dope That's why I'm in like rope, ask me if I like them, no My quotes already dope, before this rhyme was broke Sip across that castle moat, cause I'm the one that's dope I find a way to talk about that black talk every day That's how I always say, that I am here to say that black song Set you out in white song, hip walk Jackin' like a bean song Open up, let us sit down We be about that div again We be about that major move Ain't think about no extra friends We want that black talk And you out in white song Hit walk, push it talk Jackin' like a bean song Open up, let us sit down We be about that div again We be about that major move Ain't think about no extra friends When I walk in the party It be like who is so that I feel they eyes up on me Cause I'm the one they want it because I got it, flown it, I see to take it on it How we been ripping, showed it, like Zora on a horse The glamour glitching, glossing, just way when fly and flossing I feel so much as costly, Empress is gumbo sausage Niggas is mad cause I lost me, let the life of the time get off me Cause I'm that earthly coffin, black body be the boss it. White folk they love being off me, but I be killing them softly So if you bring that here, you better be very clear The use of tears and empress of 10,000 years this year, put black talk in your ear. That truth you might just fear. I talk that black talk, let you out in white talk. Hip walk, put your talk, jacking like a bean song. Open up, let us see him. We be about that div again. We be about that major move. Ain't think about no extra friends. We want that black talk, let you out in white talk. Hip walk, put your talk, jacking like a bean song. Open up. Let us see him, we be about them dividends We be about them major moves Ain't think about no extra friends Peace everybody Going live on Super Heavy Radio 3.0, Future Friday Nights. I'm your host, I say the Duke of Tears, my co-host, Selena, Empress, Empress of 10,000 Years, um, my brother, Saga Saad, as well as a uh, little homie, Amor. I want to say thank you to everybody who's been uh, holding us down for the past, like I said, two years or whatever since we've been doing this. It's been very, very, um, you really work to stay consistent. And to make sure that there's at least there's something else that uh, is out there, you know what I mean, that can, again, empower those people who can associate and understand what it is we're doing and who can really think for themselves, you know what I mean? Like President Harry Truman, 
you know, one of the biggest puppets in the United States uh, government that ever was, said one of the truest things ever. And he said, the only thing new in this world is the history you don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, again, being that we are striving to not only, well, it's beyond reclaiming our history because we, we never really lost it. What we lost was the active participation in the nationality aspect and the full implementation of our culture based on the amalgamation of our so-called nation into the inferior or the corrupt nations of the West. So, again, we are our own saviors, you know what I'm saying, as well as our own uh, slave masters. We are at a stage where we are all being confronted with choices and things that we made at times in our lives that we necessarily weren't necessarily the most conscious. Yet, every conscious thought or choice that we make, even in a so-called brain death state, has a lasting impression on the rest of eternity. And therefore, we must always allow ourselves the luxury of figuring things out in the course of time, as opposed to feeling that we need everything done within a certain time frame, you know, a certain time parameter, which is really a limitation on the psyche, which doesn't allow the soul to get the fullest effect of whatever reason is sojourned down to this third density in the first place. So if everybody can understand what I just said in terms of that, we can really understand why this is the time specifically now that we're in where we're being not only confronted with the choices, but the ramifications of those choices and what they have meant. So those people who chose to cut niggas' throats and be grimy and whack, uh, maybe around, let's say, two, four, five years ago, you're starting to receive the negative aspect of that karma right now. So those people who have been wronged by people like that, and who have been, in a sense, used, or let's say even abused by so-called people who are supposed to be out there helping them, this is the time for you to receive your retribution and your redemption. Just based on a lot of the, the, the transits that's going, the, the placements that's going on right now. You know, you got the moon trying in Venus. You got the moon trying in Mercury. You got the moon trying in Mars. You got the moon conjunct Pluto. You got the moon squaring Saturn. Then you got Mars trying Pluto. And then you got Mercury trying Pluto with uh, Mercury also um uh, what is that? I think that's opposing, opposing um, uh, Mars. So, you know, we'll get into each one of those things in a minute. But essentially what I'm saying is that the time that we're in is the best time to get things done. You know what I'm saying? This is the best time in reality to start things totally new. If you've been thinking about cutting off communication with certain people based upon how whack they've been to you or how whack you've been to them, or vice versa. Now is the time for you to make a clean break. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, again, this is the period for you to reestablish what it is is most important to you within this time. You know, yet those people that had negative intent during this time are finding everything that they're doing squared. So, like I said, one of the placements tonight, for instance, is Moon, Square, and Saturn. So, when the moon squares Saturn, that's intuitive communication that is supposed to be brought forth for some sort of structure. So recently, you know, this can be seen as like the intuitive nature of agreements that are made and how it is Saturn plays an influence in those degrees or in that whatever decision that is. But most intuitive decisions are made, what they say, by moonlight. And therefore, the moonlight, which is the reflected sunlight, is really just a representation or physical symbolism of the intuitive nature of comprehension and understanding. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of that type of stuff going around. Um, this week was real, real hectic. In terms of, um, I would call this week rumor week. This is the week that I heard about so many different rumors 
and so many different things that I allegedly, my queen allegedly has been involved in. It's just real funny how these things could go down when I'm not even in or around or even speak to any of these people who has people speaking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, it's not so much about what is being said more than about what's not being said. And what I find in our community, not necessarily the Super Eru community, but the greater, let's say, conscious community, is that we are all going through this purging period within our own lives and selves in which we are working to do away with that type of uh, stance or informational stances and stuff that are seemingly becoming more and more contrite or outdated. So, again, this is the time that we are supposed to be as Noble Jolly quoted the new moors who bring about the greater change to propel a society into a further and uplift fallen humanity. Yet the more we need to do something new, the more we keep sticking to old, let's say, traditional things that really haven't even proven totally solvent. So, you know, one aspect of reptilian, let's say, uh, possession or reptilian uh agenda is the fact that the reptilian mind or the reptilian section of the brain does not evolve. It is the way that it has always been because that is its purpose, to be draconian, to be very black and white, to be extreme. Therefore, when climates and societies change, people with maladapted reptilian centers of the brain do not, and therefore they wind up dead or uh, they wind up being taken out by the circumstances, by the society, by the very fact that nothing in physical reality that is made finite has an infinite ability that does not come, that does not recognize the soul and the soul's connection to God. The soul is actually a part of the fetus or focus of God, which is the baby nebula that actualizes in the ethers before you actualize here on earth. So, like I said, when you have an infant, and sometimes you can look at an infant and see a grown man in it, that's be, a grown man and grown woman in it, that's because when the infant is born, the physical archetype of what the infant, the whole, let's say if the baby comes out and the baby's an infant, but then let's say when the baby gets to be a grown man and woman, the baby is 6'2". The 6'2 version of the baby is right there in front of you in the form of that baby. It's just that it, the baby, grows into the physical form that is already set up for it to grow into. The same way, like, if you wanted to, to get some ice, you would get an ice tray, and the water that you pour into the ice tray becomes the actual ice. The same thing happens with people. You basically pour yourself into the physical stream of reality, and you basically grow into the form that uh, is that you are meant to become because that is the blueprint that the cells and the genetics that you exist in or exist within you use to calibrate, recalibrate, and grow the cells into the set form. You dig? So just like if you're trying to build a building, you can't build a building without setting the foundation because the foundation is what the building is built on. And all the foundation is is a bunch of hollowed-out earth dug up and then refilled in with a hard substance, concrete, basalt, whatever it is, and then everything is built on top of that. So the same thing with babies. You see what I'm saying? Therefore, the evidence of the soul is in the procreation of the child. The evidence of the eternal soul is in the smile and the beauty that comes from the nurturing of beautiful children, which is why the devil and the adversary and the society we live in gets us or gets people within it to pray and destroy and retard their children. You know what I'm saying? which is a vested, and again, this, this, they have to do that because they have a vested interest in the, the mental deterioration of your baby. Because if your babies are mentally on point, then that means that their babies, and, their, and this is how they look at it. This is not me saying, okay, you know, this one is inferior, this one's superior. I'm just saying 
that the very premise of white society, the very premise of Western philosophy, the very premise of white supremacy is built on not only a lie, but on a false sense of superiority. Everything in their reality is based on the false assumption that Caucasian people are supreme above all and everyone else. And Caucasian people, even if they don't agree with that, don't disagree with it enough to change that overall opinion in people who are not, in people who are Caucasian. See, what white folk do a lot of times is that they'll just embrace the black culture so much they won't go back to the white folk. And part of the reason that they should is because, by example, you running away from your people and coming up under mine is not helping my people at all. It's not helping your people at all. It's like those 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 artists and, and writers and all of that stuff that those people during the um, 60s and all of that. Like a lot of people don't know, Alex Haley got his start by working at Playboy magazine. You know what I mean? Alex Haley did the first interview ever, you know, for uh, Playboy. And I think it was with, um, what's his name? Who was in it? Um, I think he interviewed Malcolm X. But during the course of that, he interviewed mad people for Playboy. People don't know. The day that King was assassinated, Jesse Jackson showed up on the Playboy after the dark show with the blood on his shirt in the Bill Cotton. But the thing about it is he had no connection with with Dr. King's body at the time as per uh, revealed by um, Brother Steve Coakley. So again, Civil rights, what we perceive as roots, racial identity, the Playboy Mansion had a lot to do with that. <laughs> because it gave a real Playboy, as the magazine was one of the only magazines that was allowing these brothers to go in and really go in on racial shit. You know what I mean? Which, again, was deployed because a lot of the black magazines, Jet Ebony, all of those are Boulay magazines, you know what I mean, Talented Temp magazines, so there's only but so much political dissent that they can really talk about within that. You know what I'm saying? So I say all of that to say that there were aspects of our history in terms of the struggle as original people and certain people that were involved in it that we don't even really realize, you know, that made such an impact on what it is today, on what it is we do today and how it is we look at things. You know what I mean? And like I said, um, this is the time in which we, we we need to evaluate all options that lead to some sort of unified understanding, at least, to get to a point that we can get out of this rut that we all feel ourselves in. Because we are in one, you know? And it's a it's a stagnation thing more than the fact that it's like a bunch of niggas that just don't want to do nothing. That's not really what's going on with us. We almost have so much knowledge that we're almost frozen in what to do. You know, this is the first generation, let's say, in history in which we have totally reunified huge aspects, huge clusters of missing history that we have had in this country and the world for hundreds of years. Seem like every other week there's a new book coming out showing and proving how great we are in society and the world. But what do we have monetarily, physically, socially to show and prove that? If we have over, what would they say, uh, $3.5 billion trillion invested in the so-called United States government as buying power, we as black people have buying power, $3.5 trillion, yet we don't have one natural resource or one natural uh, uh, product that we export to European countries specifically besides entertainment. I'm not talking about entertainment and rap and dancing and all that other stuff because we can always do that in white society. They always want a troubadour. They always want somebody to dance and shop for them because that is the only way that they feel comfortable. You see what I'm saying? 
because any other event or any in any other situation, you know, it's always about who's dominant, you know. So whenever you're dealing with people with a false superiority complex, you're dealing with really a false inferiority complex. So everything is based upon what it is and who it is you are and 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 how that relates to what it is their agenda, what their agenda really is, you know what I mean, in the long run. So, like I said, for the most part, we're at this day where we are, seem like, like I said, in the 60s, when we had less knowledge about what was really going on, we had more drive and physical action to make something happen. Now we got all the knowledge and a lot more guns and stuff, and it's like we're doing, in a sense, less. Now, I'm not necessarily condoning any type of terrorist so-called uh, ordinance against the so-called uh, slave master or oppressor. You know, yet I also know that whenever you start infringing upon these white folk liberty, first thing they start talking about, first, as soon as you start infringing upon their rights or whatever, first thing they start talking about is their God-given rights, their liberty, you know what I'm saying, what what, what their country is about, their, their forefathers left for them. Like, they be the first ones. Just like they be the first ones that when they get bred to shit on the same country that allegedly is their country. It's only us, the so-called minority peoples, and not even so much even, well, yeah, the so-called people they refer to as minorities. Now, what makes you a minority is that you are not the dominant form in the federal government. The federal government considers itself the majority population in the United States, and everybody else is a citizen of them. Therefore, they have the right to have jurisdiction over you and treat you like a slave. This is why your man... You know what I mean? Only do what he told and only move, but so much. You know, he makes people. It's like people think he got power and all of that, but keep it real, man. This dude, this dude, man, is really, really bad news. And what makes it worse is the fact that all of the energy and hype that was given to the ritual to create this guy. So you're in a situation where all of these people have all of these great expectations about something that was really never meant to be in the fashion that it was made, which then disenfranchises those people once they feel like they're still not being heard, which then disunifies, demoralizes the people, which then become either more and more infatuated with the illusion or they become more and more reclusive in the illusion. This is basically another form of social engineering, how to adapt and post hypnotically suggest people to be in certain areas and places just because this is advantageous to your overall plan. Put that down. Okay, but there you go. Sorry, guys. Moisey's going through his potty training right now. You know, so um, that's one thing. Another thing is that buried in the ACLU just came out with a um, lawsuit against the United States based on all of the hidden, what they call secret provisions that they've been putting in a lot of the Defense Department bills. They call them, they have different names for them. One name, they call them uh, state secret privilege, in which states can unify with the federal government openly and so long as they um so long as they absolve their, their own state constitution and actually pick up the one man new one mandated by the government. So the ACLU basically says that a lot of these sleeper provisions in the defense bill yeah, in the defense bill um came through and basically has been saying that, you know, within the 5,000-page documents that these dudes be doing, at least 2,000 and some odd pages of it are all about secret things that they want to do and implement. But they're so secret and so buried in the report. The question is, who, how is it that they can even enforce this if they don't even know what part of legislation says in this shit? Who's writing this 5,000-word document? Because they damn sure ain't reading them. But this is exactly the problem, you know. 
a good movie that people should get that was in the theaters and out the theaters real quick. And it's all about the stimulus package and the bankers and how they lied and how the United States itself was basically on the brink of not only financial ruin, but on the brink of utter insolvency. Is a movie called uh, uh, Wall Street 2 by uh, Oliver Stone with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen is even in it, you know what I mean, to bring the whole movie full circle, you know. So, with that, I also did the knowledge that your man who said he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay, basically, since since he's gotten office, they've had over, out of the um, 110 prisoners there, they've had over 45 deaths, all so-called suicides. So you mind controlling these people and programming them with death forces, basically, to kill them. Or they just straight killing them and, and basically blaming it on on the fact that these dudes is trying to find a way out, literally, and so they kill themselves. Either way, this is the same dude. Again, hypocrisy is so crazy. This is the same guy who's winning the damn uh, Nobel Peace Prize. You see what I'm saying? They're showing you how duplicitous this whole thing is. And now that they're getting ready to make this move in Pakistan, it's going to get increasingly worse. They're moving on Pakistan is the worst thing that they could ever do at this stage in the game for them. But again, they don't listen to us, so let these niggas run themselves into the ground. But the biggest aspect of that is that, like I said, Pakistan is non-aggression treaties with Russia and China. So everything, you know, according to certain people within that cipher, it's decided in Beijing, Washington, Brussels, and uh, they didn't even say the UK. They said somewhere else. And they said everybody else is irrelevant because those are the main bullies on, on, on the exchange. But the thing about it is China and Russia, remember, these are totally horrible. These are horrible governments. These are still uh, worldly governments. But they're moving into a phase where they are working to switch roles. So Russia and China want or are working to still maintain control, superiority, whatever, but they're working on ways of integrating this greater world view. You know what I mean? Whereas, whereas the United States is all about dominating every, excuse me, every, everyone. <laughs> so you get into phases where the foreign policy is usually dictated upon what the economy or what the defense system is strategically doing. Here's a historical fact. Iraq, Iraq as a country has been bombed every day since 1991. From 1991 to 2000 and almost 12, Iraq has had bombs dropped on it every day. Specific, specifically over the regions of people like the ethnic Kurds and um, the uh, Shias and the and the um, The um, I said the Kurds. Yeah, with the Kurds. So, because the Kurds worship Malik Toss, who is a version of Amun, they worship the black man and the black woman, you know what I'm saying, in the form of the peacock, what they call the peacock king. <laughs> so, yeah, they're killing people hand over fist, man, you know. Just like uh, the, the, the thing with Iraq now is that they're working to merge Iraq with, you know, excuse me, Iran with the United States 
or they want to create a system where, the United, where Iran is now an ally of the United States based on all of the cluster stuff going on in Libya and the other spots. But again, this is all skullduggery, meaning that it's all, well, a better word for that, subterfuge. This is all a form of, of, of bait and switch to take away from a lot of the erosion stuff they're doing here. They are literally terraforming the country. When they open in these levees, when they get in the army course of civil engineers to open these levees on people, the same levees that allegedly that they needed to work on at the time of Katrina, they're purposely flooding whole sections of the country now. They want to turn, they're not being real with the people in the fact that they want to turn a lot of the Midwest into wild, pristine lands, like forest lands, like 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 how it was prior to the Louisiana Purchase. You know what I'm saying? And all of the people who exist and live within those places are basically, um, they're looking at them or they're treating them kind of like squatters. And this is all through U.S., U.N., NATO. NATO, when you switch the anagram letters on it, is Atom. Atom is the universal sun disk with the 19 rays that spread down on the planet. Of the UN Security Council, there's the six or five main um, partners, right? Russia, China, Britain, America, France, Germany, uh, Japan, China, right? But then overall, there are 19 countries within the sphere of that influence because the UN is modeled off of the atom. There's scenes from the Temple of uh, Edfu and I believe the Temple of Abydos that has a scene, a glyph, that has a building with flags on it that looks exactly like the UN. Could do the knowledge on that. And that's because Kemet has always been the United States, you know what I'm saying, of original people's consciousness. Before there was America, before there was Kemet, before there was all of that. So everything that we naturally are esoterically or intangibly, right, things we represent, they have to turn themselves and become that physically in the world to justify their position of uh, acting as God of the material realm or Lord of the earth, which means um, a king and saint in service. Just like they just indicted uh, the guy, Eric Prince, who runs Blackwater for creating a separate unofficial Blackwater agency called the UAE in the desert, which is basically being used as a training ground because the next step is you're going to hear this guy on TV call for them to put Israel back to where it was before the battle of 1967, the Six-Day War. They want to put Israel back to where it was before that. So we have gone back from, so he wants them to go back even further in time now. So what this also means is that they don't have enough soldiers to fight this. So what they want to do is come up with a mandate that allows them, the United States, to hire mercenary soldiers openly as mercenary armies as opposed to contractors to go in and fight these wars on their behalf, which means then that these people are not under the same jurisdiction of war that the United States soldiers technically are under, even though they don't follow that either. They are finding people in Libya, soldiers are capturing prisoners, allegedly protesters, allegedly uh, alleged uh, alleged uh, student protesters who was against, allegedly against the student uh, Gaddafi, they're finding these dudes with Israeli identification and, and star David tattoos and stuff on these dudes. They're also finding them with, with uh, United States government artillery. You see what I'm saying? So, again, this whole thing is really just a wash in them working to 
have a foothold on that side of the so-called African Peninsula while they carve up to create their little um, passport place through this pipeline that they want to set up. Again, coming down through Afghanistan into Pakistan and then into the Indian Ocean, you know, which is dreadfully, dreadfully a wrong move for them because they don't have enough forces to do so. And once they agree to allow them to use mercenary armies as a means of defense, this means that the United States government, as it stands, is kind of like the the Attack of the Clones movie. It's like you have the standing army of the Republic, but then you have this clone army that they're making allegedly to defend the public when really this clone army is going to be used to go in and destabilize and kill everybody. So, um... Let's see. There was anything else before we get into some calls. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think we're I think we're kinda of caught up at least for today. The other thing, too, about this guy, this president, is uh, you got to watch where his Neptune is um, because it'll tell you the level of um, occult shit that he's into. He's got a Neptune in uh, Scorpio. Neptune at 8 degrees. His uh, Scorpio at 36. So he's real, real intrigued and real into the ritual of what it is he's been set to do, you know. So we can get into some calls. <clears throat> Peace. Mr. Radio. Peace, this is Queen. Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you, Queen. How you doing? Oh, good. Peace, yes, I can hear you. Um, I want to ask, wait. He's to um, you, Selena, the baby, uh, more in uh, Saga side and the listening audience. Um, I want to ask you. if you're welcome. If there is, uh, me and my king were talking about, he felt like it's a misalignment or some ill alignment of the something. And I just noticed a lot of um, birds lately. Like, you know how they fly and swoop down in front of the cars and they barely yeah. get out of the way? Um, they're not yeah. making it. <laughs> yeah, they're getting hit. You notice that, right? I, it's not funny, but <laughs> they're yeah. not working. Yeah. And I just wonder, like, what is what is that? What's going on? What's your what is your perspective oh. on that? That's a great question, Point. Um, the magnetic poles have already shifted magnetically. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So north, south, east, and west is going through its own metamorphosis. The animals use birds specifically are tuned into the magnetic frequency of the planet. So when that happens, it alters the trajectory in terms of the instinctual uh, genetic patterns of mating and spawning and dying and stuff. So this is why you would find, they was finding penguins in Brazil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow, finding, okay. Like, polar bears. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, being drifting off, drifting away like on icebergs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, they're all, everybody's going through it. But at the same time this is happening, the animal kingdom's consciousness is being upgraded as well. So Upgraded? Certain upgraded, meaning they're becoming more intelligent. Okay. So the man, you know, He's at war with everything. So the upgrading intelligence of the animal kingdom automatically is, he already knows, is looking at that as a byproduct or a greater or a symptom of the greater understanding or intellectual awakening of us. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So what's happening yeah. to us is spilling over to all of the other facets of reality in terms of living organisms as they raise their consciousness. So the more we raise our consciousness up, the more everybody else can raise up. You see what I'm saying? Okay. 
All right. So they target certain birds, black birds specifically, black belly, red belly black birds, starling, grackles, um, crow. Well, they don't really mess with crows too much. Um, you know, birds that have a, that are kind of like plentiful, but are not really, um, are more like in the food chain of other animals. Okay. You know what I'm so okay. they figure they'll attack this section of birds because this will throw off, let's say, the the crows or the hawks or the foxes or whatever else that eat these birds. You see, which then okay. further retards the food chain. Wow. And then so forth okay. and so on. You know. All right. So, okay, yeah, I didn't so ask I, anybody else. I wanted to know because, um, and I'm thinking, is it just me that notices this? So I said I would ask nah. tonight. Okay. I'm glad you did, thank but you. not absolutely. That's what's up. Okay. And um, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Okay. Peace. 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 You want to radio? Peace. Peace, Queen. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, wow. Hi, Duke. It's a tears. Um, God hey, bless you, you and your queen? family. Thank you. I wanted to so ask you a question. What's Can up? you hear me? I hear you perfectly. All right, hold on. Okay. I've been seeing, I'm hitting the movies heavy, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm in the Colton. And I keep seeing in all these movies... They're vomiting. I don't care if it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a love story, science fiction. Why do they vomit? It's always a scene where they they vomit in the movies, even in the shows. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Vomiting. Vomiting is a form of, or can be a form of, uh, well, it's always a form of purging. It's, it's a physical act of purging, yet the the context of the vomiting, you see, denotes what the purging is about. You know what I'm saying? So okay. one of the products or one of the symptoms of possession, for instance, in people who are, you know, worked over or tooled up in that form of mind control, um, is projectile vomiting, like what you see in, like, The Exorcist. hmm You know, um, okay. when they do it in movies with babies, it's a form of, of, it's usually a bit, a comedy bit or something like that when a baby's mm-hmm. involved, but it's it's uh, another, in my opinion, a, a loosely veiled um, allegory to ejaculation. Okay, because I'm seeing adults. It's not even the babies anymore. You just see it with a lot of men. You don't really see the women doing it, but you'll see this bit with somebody in the middle of a show, and then you have this scene with somebody just puking, and I'm sensitive to that. So I I constantly, I don't watch TV. I can't stand it, but, you know, I am doing the movies, and I'll see it, and and I'll say, well, what is that making me feel like? And it's hitting, definitely hitting, you know, I can feel from the first, second chakra, mm-hmm. even the third, mm-hmm. you know, but it's... Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the throat. That's the throat. Yeah, area. it's like a blow. Yeah, yeah you open yeah. and it, they go in on you, you know, with that, that, you know, uh, I, I don't know, ritual. I don't know what they're doing. It was a hot tub, um, time machine. It was, I mean, yeah, it, uh, it, it, I mean, just stupid stuff. They vomited on the machine. Yeah, yeah, I mean, disgustingly. That was a big movie. Hot tub yes, time very. Machine was a very big movie. Very deep. I think very Bobby, good, you, you've mentioned it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I I, I just deep. want to say thank you for taking my call. I want to say to Selena, no every time I want you to tell your queen that she's not listening, I hear mm-hmm. her. It's a song you and her did together. I forgot the name. I'm sorry. I keep thinking of her. I play it all the time. But the part where she say, have no fear, to her, when yeah. I get scared, to her, I hear her. I think of that verse. Oh, well. And all fear goes away. That's Tell that's her to stay strong. Keep talking to us. We need to hear. And um, thank you for I'm everything. Gonna you, I'm going to let you tell her. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Peace, Queen. Peace, Queen. 
Peace, Queen. Hi. Uh, hi. I just Bless want to tell you, you know, many mm-hmm. blessings to you and your family. And I was just oh, telling your husband, you. your king, I just let him know that every time I get scared, I have fears. I think of that verse when you say it, have no fear. You mm. know, and I think I think of you all the time. Don't know you, just your, your essence, your presence, just what you stand for, where you stand in your family. Just keep doing it. It's shining. Thank you. you know? Thank and you so much. That's really, really it. nice to hear today. I yeah. um, plan on coming on the show, and it just was such a heavy day with our computer not working and just, you know, it was working yesterday and just crazy stuff that um, I felt a little down, just like not even emotionally, but like I need to just, you know, close off and clean the house again. And It's just been constant. And when you hear, I, I feel like I have friends with women that I haven't met yet, and it's such a, a good feeling because... We don't need no computers. We connected. We connected. We don't, we don't computers is... It's short here. We all get it. And (laughs) don't worry. Yep. Thank you. I really appreciate What's your name? Tanja. Thank you, Tanja. Thank Thank you you. so much for your love and the support because I definitely do feel it. I feel like when I get certain emails and hear voices like this and just get to meet women like you, um, I know one day universe will have it that we'll be up actually able to meet physically as well. And even if we don't, um, I really am going to have you in my prayers. I wrote your name down. And I definitely am going to keep you in my my thoughts. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you so much for the love. All right, love. You're welcome. You're welcome. for supporting him as well. Just the knowledge, you know, your thing. Yes, yes. And I'll keep the show going. Yes. Um, Thank thank you, Duke. Thank you to the whole family. God bless you you all. God bless you too, Queen. God bless you. And have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Peace. Peace. I'm finna cry. It's real. Another thing about that um, projectile vomiting thing, it's another way. They don't really show a lot of women doing that unless it's a comedy bit about bulimia because they don't really want to, like, deal with that too much because that's another symptom of mind control, bulimia, anorexia all of that type of stuff. But when you see men men do it, you don't really hear about male bulimia. And it's a problem that a lot of males go through and can exhibit in movies like that openly and it kind of just goes by the people unconsciously. Almost like it's okay. So we get into another call. Peace, Mr. Behavior Radio. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. What's up, Jake? What's going on, King? I'm good, Lord. How are you, man? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, First off, I want to make a comment and take it how you will, but uh, pills are pharmaceutical. They're part natural and part unnatural. (laughs) And ultimately, you have to pay for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, pills, right? Yeah, the pills. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've got a comment and I've got a question. Uh, my mm-hmm. comment is this. I think um, the people in the Super Heru family mm-hmm. need to um, really come together and support this, this God right here. Um, I don't know what it can be done. I mean, financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, this show, this 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 wave life must continue. And I just want to let everybody know in in the listening audience that uh, you have to support this family. You have to support the knowledge that he's giving you, and he's not giving you a bunch of lectures that you'll hear six months from now, or you know that you have to pay thirty, forty dollars to see and all that. This is this is weekly education, and uh, you should have your pens and papers out. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, King. I appreciate that, man. Definitely, definitely. If, yeah. Even if it's a dollar, throw it to PayPal, throw it to this man because, um, you know, we have to have this kind of thing continue. Thank you, Ken. Mm-hmm. I appreciate so, that. And as far as my question is, uh, uh, I, I sent, I shot you an email about maybe a month and a half ago about it, and I guess I'll, I'll spill it publicly. But I have at least 12 pictures of me and my daughter, mm-hmm. and each picture, every one of them, she is to my left, 
and I'm still trying to figure out what this could all mean. Everyone. Was she every on your left has, and you're on the right, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, well, that's that's actually archetypically correct in a sense because if you pattern that positioning based on the positioning of the tree of life, the man stands on the right under the pillar of mercy and the woman stands on the left, which is the pillar of uh, severity. Um, mm-hmm. Also, Bina, the Sephiroth Bina, or Bina, as some people call it, is um, all black, representative of the original, you know, black woman. So mm-hmm. you, in these positions, if you notice, like if you look back at the wedding of this dude uh, and the, the chick, when they were on the balcony, they were standing where she was on the left and he was on the right, but when they were going through the wedding, it was reversed. But if you look at stately pictures or whatever, you usually see the woman on the left because naturally we have a preponderance to sync up ourselves with the symbolic nature of things. You know what I mean? Whether we realize it or not. So you and and her in those pictures like that is just, again, a sign to you <laughs> that you're on a certain frequency, you see what I'm saying, that uh, is not actuated on uh, the standard. Your relationship is a lot deeper, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, or can be a lot deeper based on the symbolic nature of what you guys automatically kind of just do, <laughs> you know what I mean? which is yeah. symbolized by it. But see, if you didn't notice it, you see, it wouldn't mean anything. Yeah, exactly. And and that is the power of creation working through symbolism to bring a spiritual resolution to a physical experience, which is now manifested in your comprehension of the experience, which makes you the perceiver of the experience, the participant of the experience, and the distant observer of the experience all at the same time. Exactly. So now that I know, it now opens up a whole new paradigm of opportunity, exactly. experiences. You okay. That's right. With you and her. You see and and, and so, obviously and when just you gives explain us... it to her, because then when you uh-huh. explain it to her, if she's old enough or if she understands it, and you explain it to her, then it opens up another reality or potential reality based upon the fact that you shared a greater understanding about something that to most people is trivial. Excellent. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. in reality, the most trivial things or the small things would lead to the big things. Exactly. So it, you know what I'm saying? So when you acknowledge the smallest thing, when it becomes big, you already can participate in it because you didn't hate on it during its journey to become what it was to be. Exactly, exactly. And it's kind of like the example that I gave uh, to one of my friends the other day. And that's the other thing. I want to make another last comment in that I think the people in the Super Heyru family also need to start testing out their friends and start realizing yeah. that, listen, they may not be good for you. I'm starting to yeah. realize that many of my friends, uh, whenever I talk to issues like about you know things like this, um, they shut down quick or they're quick yeah. to argue, and yeah. that should not be a way of, you know, you saying, well, I'm not going to talk to anybody anymore. No, continue, right. to, continue to speak out on these things. Continue to right. to give people a, a, a different perspective on mundane issues that they may not, you know, that they may just have heard the same old dribbles many times and time again. Because what you'll do is that you'll start to grab, you'll grab, you'll grab their attention. And what when you grab their attention, you'll grab their their inner soul, in, in my in my opinion, and you're mm-hmm. you're tugging at it. You're getting them to look at themselves. You're getting them to look at the world in a different light now. And I just want mm-hmm. the family to understand that, you know, continue to do what you're all doing because um, it's mm-hmm. working and these, these, you know, the enemy doesn't hardly have a leg to stand on anymore. He don't. He don't, man. He don't. And it's it's putting ourselves in the in the in the knowledge to know that as worse as things are, the nature of human spirit is to see and 
rise from the bleakness of whatever the situation is. So in the very darkness of how intrepid and how scandalous or, or horrible uh, instance can be, there can mm-hmm. be some sort of redemption that comes out of that, you see what I'm saying, that can be mm-hmm. brought to the greater good to then allow everybody to come up and realize that that's not something we should participate in. It's not until people realize that they should not participate that it's not about, let's say, supporting the troops. Not saying mm-hmm. that you shouldn't support your loved one that may be a soldier, but if you support the troops, you support the war. It's not like you can't do one without the other. So at least come out and be real with what and who you're supporting. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because when you say I support, when you say things, when people say things like, "Oh well, I support the troops, but I, I don't like the war," they don't. They voluntarily chose to become a part of this organization whose primary function is to kill people. Exactly. So whether you did it for college or whatever else is irrelevant when you are being shelled upon, you know what I'm saying, by sometimes your own people. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing about the whole Army thing nowadays is like, you know, you, when you sign up, you actually are signing up in an intelligence game in which you, the soldier, are also the enemy. Mm-hmm. Which is why they they make these people use uranium bullets, depleted bullets and shit like that to handle, and then they come back here with radioactive poisoning, which then becomes classified as Gulf War Syndrome, which then mm-hmm. they pass on. You don't know if you're passing this on genetically or sexually to whoever you with, you know what I mean, or whatever you drink from. Radiation travels. Exactly. So, you know, essentially... It all boils down to what it is you said in the fact that until we decide that this is what we're going to do, other people are going to create a fictitious agenda for other people to rally around. So unless mm-hmm. you purge these ideologies and can be strong enough to stand sometimes by yourself or with a few people, sometimes it's better to be right you know what I'm saying, than correct. So it may mm-hmm. be more correct for you to keep that job, but it may not be right for you spiritually. It may be killing you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Why and you that's not the only way to get money. That's what I'm saying. It could be literally killing you, getting angry with this shit. So it's like you got to weigh what's more important, you know? Exactly. So I, I appreciate the call, brother. Thank no you problem. for the support as well. Peace and to the family. Sister Selena, and peace to all who are attaining the Indeed. knowledge. Indeed, brother. Be safe. Be safe as well. Peace, peace. Peace. Peace, Mr. Bay Radio. Seven one eight. Hello. Hey. Hey. What's up, King? Oh, uh, what's going on? How are you? I'm good, King. How you doing? Uh, this is John from Queensbridge. I called you about a month ago. Sorry, we didn't get back in touch with you. I want to say peace to the oh, brave family and peace to your family. I have peace several. You, I have about three questions. I want to know about. Uh, Cleaning um my chakras and my aura, what I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first, one of the first things you can do is uh, when look around your crib. Well, go outside. Like, look at your house. Look around your room where you sleep at primarily. Right. Look around, you know, sit on your bed. Really look around at everything in your room. Don't move nothing. Just... Look at everything. Then go outside for about 15 minutes, you know. Then when uh-huh. you're back inside, sit back down in the same place that you looked at the room and look to see if, look to see what shouldn't be there. Right. You understand? Uh-huh. If you see, if you don't, see anything, do it at least two more times, you know what I mean? 
if you don't see right. anything in person. But whatever you see that shouldn't be there, um, get rid of it. You know, take it out. And then acknowledge where it came from and what and how it wound up in your, your spot. Because right. there's a thing called Vizaxis, which is the elemental placement of shapes in sanctified spaces that can sometimes throw off the shock the shock rip equilibri- equilibrium of the individual. Right. Meaning that there can be things around you that you just had around you because let's say you had that type of thing around you in a past life, but in this life it's contrary to what and who you are striving to become. Therefore, it acts as a spiritual anchor to an aspect of your unconscious that you are consciously not aware of that is unconsciously keeping you from achieving a certain thing by not being totally comfortable in your chakra body. Right. Can that be a person, too? Yes. That was my next point. (laughs) That's my next point. (laughs) Then you do that. You clean out your space, you know what I mean, get all in the corners or whatever, and place, cut up an onion and put it in the four corners of your room and leave it there until you feel like all of the energy residually is gone. And you pick the onions up, pick the onions up and you put them in a bag and then you bury them, bury them or burn them, you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. You can also write what you want to let go of on the inside of the bag. See what I'm saying? So when you bury it, you bury it where nobody can find it. If you bury it, if you burn it, you make sure that it's burnt totally, you know what I mean? Right. And you um, mm-hmm. stamp it into the ground. And thereby, you'll symbolically be getting rid of all of that. You know? Right. All right. That, that's one way to, to do it externally. You can uh-huh. also... Um, invest in goat's milk baths. Those are good. Or rose water baths. Those are good too. How often should you take that? Once a week? Um, so we we should all be probably taking them like once a week. Oh, okay. If not a rose, if not a rose water or goat's milk or Epsom bath, we should definitely be doing that at least all once right. a week. And, and um, um go ahead. Uh, no, we take the sea salt, the sea salt mm-hmm. bath. We use mm-hmm. that. We get, we take that like once a week with the children too. Mhm. Mm. Is well, that good? You might want to throw. That that's cool, but you don't want to do too much. It's better. It would be better to like take them to the ocean if you could. More oh, okay. so than the, the sea salt in that way, because. Uh-huh we have this thing called the Wei Qi around us, and salt is a etheric chemical that can strip away at it a little bit. So you could could switch the over time, you know what I mean? So as Mm -hmm. they're growing, you want to make sure that their joint is fortified, you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh. It's good for outer cleansing, per se, but the other side of that is that... um, it can mess with the way you a little bit. So you might, you could switch that for the goat's milk or the rose water, or you could get a bunch of rose petals, uh, like a, a thing of roses, uh, break them up and throw them in the water. All of that changes the alchemical process and the alchemical nature of what the water is being used for, you know? So whatever we use or whatever we choose to use something for, that is what that something becomes. Right. You know? All right. So you could do that and definitely look at the people around you, you know? Right. Uh, a real old school, old school method to keep people from talking crap about you, you know, would would be the cow tongue. You know, the old ones would, would get, a, get a cow tongue and write all the people who talk the crap around them and wrap it uh-huh. up in paper, put it right. to a board, put, yeah, yeah, you're right, you know, and uh, get rid of it, but that that always works, 
Oh, that yeah. always works. <laughs> yeah, that always works. <laughs> wow. Know? And in that, it's not too, like, like deep. Like, blood is involved, but it's not like you, you bloodletting. You're not like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like cutting a chicken head off or something like that or drinking cow's blood, you know? Uh-huh. Right. All right. And um, another question about this um, May 21st thing. That's all nonsense. Because I'm hearing one thing from my brother from Atlanta saying the um, stock market posted the crash, and then up here in New York they're talking about doomsday and some nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's it's oh, it's it's the it's the precursor to to uh to uh twenty twelve. Oh, okay. So it's it's a it's a it's a test run. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like like the first W World Trade Center bombing, like it's the setup. It's like okay, let's uh-huh. see how people reacted, what they're gonna do. It's an eye. Right. Oh, okay. But it comes from it comes from Initially, it comes from this chick named Eddie ba- Edie Baker, who is the founder of the Church of the Christ Scientist, which which kind of influenced L. Ron Hubbard in the Scientology thing, in a right. way, because they all came from the same Theosophic background and Crowley and all of that. So uh-huh. they um, are uh, subjects of, of all of that, you know. So all right. yeah, she predicted it. She predicted it and said that you know this would happen. But it, but her prediction was based on an old Tamar Khan prediction about the end of the artificial realities rule, optical rule of the world. Oh. So it means the end of the world in the sense of the end of a huge aspect of the illusionary facet of Maya slash ISIS, slash the artificial reality. Yet, it's not the physical end of anything because, you know, they still got to try to get this dude elected. They need to get the Pakistan thing popping. They need another, you know, uh, global disaster. They're going to have to set one up now because they killed, oh, uh, the, they killed the fake Osama. Uh, Osama. So, oh, all right. them killing him is the setup for them to set off some Global like terror attack, so that way mm-hmm. now they have a greater pretense into the Pakistan thing, which is going to bring them into open conflict with China, which is then going to lead to the World War Six thing. Wow! All right. Thanks a lot. So you know, be safe, and mm-hmm. you know, as brief as it is, it's not the fact that we are talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't have no intelligence briefings. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't even care to a uh, certain degree. So there's a certain degree of protection that we have been allotted. So, you know, thank you. Right. Hold on, my Fuck queen got a question for you. Hold on. Cool. Um, peace to you and the queen and the peace. children. Um, peace, what's up, queen? You doing? Um, I had a question. I wanted to know about homeschooling because we were thinking about homeschooling our children. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to know how to go about that and is it complicated? Do they make it complicated for you to homeschool your child? Um, certain states are more are more friendly to it than others. Like Florida is very friendly to that because they, cause some Jews in that in the state budget, and them them bougie blacks, they don't wanna, they don't wanna pay for education like that. Okay, because so, we were thinking about relocating to Florida. So we yeah, wanted. Well, if you do down here, it's really cool. They really don't really mess with you too much with that. You can kind of just do your thing, so long as you know you don't do too many. Like you can be cultural, but you gotta do it in a manner in which it you seem agreeable, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Not necessarily accommod- more accommodating, you know what I'm saying, in the sense that, you know, you'll make sure that they read the textbooks that whatever kids they are reading or whatever as well, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. as opposed to just your understanding of what education is. But okay. there's going to be a whole upswell of, of this based on all of the rapes and stuff taking place in school, so this is kind of the best time to do that. 
Oh, okay. Are, are there any special tests that we would have to take or classes? Um, no, nah, to- nah, not necessarily. What you could do is you could go online and you could um, type uh, Google uh, home schools, well, particularly here in Florida, because they have good models of them and they're kind of like hands off with the parents. They kind of let them, kind of let them rock to a degree. It's still bureaucracy, but it's not like niggas is coming to your house checking up on them and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for the advice. Um, you were very helpful no today. And once again, Thank peace you. to you, the queen, and the children. You as well, we have, queen. Yeah, we have three Bless small you. ones yeah. ourselves. So. <laughs> D, bless your family, man. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you guys for participating, you know. And please keep up the good work, y'all. Y'all are a physical representation. The fact that we, people like us, exist with black families like that, meaning that all of that shit they talk about black men and black women not being able to do it is a damn lie. Mm hmm. Together, you know what I'm saying? It's a damn lie. So, yeah, indeed, you. keep up the good work, y'all. Okay. Um, we're going to try to get in contact with y'all as soon as we get a chance. We've just been very busy with the children, but we definitely have to oh, get in touch. Oh, no, I understand totally. I understand totally. Okay, take care. Peace. 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 You want to behave radio? Peace, Hello? Peace, Peace. 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 Ringing in the ears, and I got a little pinhole right up, like on the side of my ear. Yes, on Can your you right side. That? Yes. Mhm. Can you explain that? Yeah. Um. That means that, well, the old school meaning, like our grandmothers and them would tell you that that meant that you um was was chosen to hear things, hear the angels speak it to you. That's the ears that the angels and the spirits talk to you through. So that means that you have a psychic ability in which you can't necessarily hear someone's thoughts, but if someone is projecting certain things to you, you can kind of tell what it is they're saying without them really saying anything. You've always kind of probably looked at it like, you know, you bugging at one point, but the ringing, in a sense, is it becoming louder? Yeah, sometimes lately it's been louder and longer. Mm hmm. That's because we're getting closer to um what they call zero point. So this are your dreams vivid? Uh sometimes I can't even most times I can't even remember my dreams. Mm hmm. You know. Yeah, I go from dream. Do you ever wake up tired yeah. from your dream? Yes. Has that been happening more frequently? Uh, well, lately it's a uh, you know physical problem, you know. Mhm. So I haven't been getting sleep because you know I got bad shoulders, so it's hard to just lay still and sleep. But uh, so lately mm-hmm. I've been tired. But you know, mm-hmm. usually I wake up tired okay. anyway. <laughs> right. No matter how much sleep I get. Mhm. Mhm. With the ringing. Do you remember when the ring started? Uh, no. How old you were? As far as I know, I've always remembered the ring in my ear. Your earliest memory? Uh, I I, I'm, I'm, I'm 50. I can't go back that far. <laughs> you could. I don't remember how long ago it was. Take a guess. Take a guess. Uh, in my 20s. Mm-hmm. So... That's when you became, let's say, conscious of it. But you always remembered of it. But this is when you, be, let's say, you became conscious of it around your twenty. Yeah, that's that's basically the. My son has that, and it's usually on the right side. And that's a again a symbol or a sign that you know you have a certain degree of. It's almost like a third ear hole. Yeah. You know? It's like a little needle point. Almost. Yes, correct. You know. I squeeze it and pus will come out. Mm. 
You know, my mother used to um, say it's good. My mother used to tell me it's good that pus is coming out, so I'm not going to back up and mess me up. You know. Mhm. Mhm. And never that's got also that's also a form of ectoplasm, which is the spiritual gelatinous substance that is created when a non-physical or let's say higher dimensional thing manifests in a material reality. It's kind of like the 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 uh, all of the, the fluid, the embryonic fluid, all of the fluid around the baby, you see. So all of that information being sent to you uh, mentally from this reality or from whatever reality this information is coming from congealed after a certain amount of time and physically became this thing that, you know, you refer to as pus that would come out of that. But you don't have none of that so-called pus coming out of any other part of you, right? Correct. Right. So that's not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's evidence of a uh, 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 step down in matter and the condensing and becoming physical of non-physical information becoming physical, and then the evidence or the leftover aspect of that coming out of this this orifice, which, again, is a is a similar thing. This is like when babies, you know, when they used to say that babies was born with veils over their face? Yeah. You ever heard about that? You ever heard that? Yeah. Same type of thing. Same type of thing. That's a throwback. That's a throwback to a time when we were on some extraterrestrial, like, high-dimensional astral travels stuff. So now that that stuff is becoming more online, now that these global clusters that were behind the sun are coming closer to us, the frequency is increasing. So this is the feeling of anticipation that we all have that makes it difficult for us to sleep and stuff like that. Because we feel this pulling or this coming of something, and then the beast is using... His this spiritual element, natural occurrence that's supposed to come and help us spiritually, genetically, metaphysically, whatever, he then piggybacks his own agenda to that to make us think that what we anticipate is coming is what he say is going to be. And it's not. Okay. So, you know, um, you can't really stop it, you know. <laughs> um but it always sounds like you've accepted it, so it's not going to turn into, like, tinnitus or anything like that, which is great. Okay. All right. Well, you it's know, been a pleasure. Um, oh, yeah, no, thank no. you, my brother, for calling. No, go ahead. No, I, I didn't know. I, 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 you, you paused. I thought you were finished. So, you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, yeah, man, it's, it's, you seem like you've accepted it, so it's like, it can only be a, a benefit now. So now what you might want to do is at times that you hear it, try to meditate or zone in on it and see if you hear anything tangible. Meaning see if you can increase the sound of it to where you can hear somebody saying something in it. Okay. That sounds good. You know what I mean? Like you could be like you could be like a transmitter is what I'm saying. Like you could be Getting this information. Well, that message and is coming. Come, that message is coming to me then. Yeah. Or coming out of you, based on what's coming closer to all of us. You see what I'm saying? It's like yeah. whatever was activated in us. The closer these things get to us, or the closer to the time that we get to where these things become manifest, the more the things that are within us feel the chemical responses and then come online and then we start having thoughts about things that we and and start to see options and possibilities of things that we probably never would have seen if this thing wasn't occurring. Yet because we are not all convinced or believe that this is something that's real. You know, it's subjective to opinion and it can be you know, minor science will say, Oh well that's just some form of tinnitus you got. So here take this pill and it'll but what the pill then will do is inhibit the sound or inhibit the part 
that allows you to hear that, which then creates an illness somewhere else. You know, because this is the way they keep the spiritually inclined in check. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that up for me. Thank you, my brother. And peace to you and your family and the family in the chat room. Peace to you, man, as well. Okay. Thanks for calling. All right. Peace. Peace, you want to read the radio? Peace. Can you hear me? Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Nope. Peace. You want to read the radio? Peace on Super Heavy Radio. Peace. Peace. What's up? Spirit King. Hey, what's up, King? How you doing? I'm good. No complaints, man. Just tuned in. I was a little late tuning in, catching on, but as always, just a, a great show. Just wanted to call Thank in and, and uh, let you know I was listening. Um, hope Thank all is well between the family. And, uh, and also, I wanted to... to uh, to, to again, just like you said, you got to ring the bell when 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 uh, the superhero family discusses something that comes out before. And I remember uh, months ago, you mentioned the the uh, resurgence that they'll push with the '80s. And yes, sir. One the, yeah, one of the cable channels right now, I think it's either AMC. I can't remember which one, but they're doing a whole '80s push where they're running all the movies from the '80s. To take everybody see, into that mindset. See that old John Hughes coming yeah, out? Yeah, exactly. Breakfast Club, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and also, um, and, and and like like you said, to me, I think I think the whole thing, like you said, with the uh, with the big thing about tomorrow, I don't even want to talk about. It. I don't even want to voice it and give it no recognition. But I think a lot of alters were triggered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, bro. You know this, right? Yeah, man. I think that was that was just a, a lot of signals went off and a lot of people have been activated, you know. Yeah, um, since that wedding. On Val yes, Purchase, they, yes. They've been going in. They've been going in. And um they they like you said, they have created this this eighties fetish now that leads to the um overall disintegration of the American body politic because the 80s, like Reagan really ruined America. He was great for the upper middle class, but he and Kissinger and them, they destroyed the American infrastructure of industry. Well, really under Carter, but started under Carter, but under Reagan, he finished that shit. He's the reason why there's no, uh, all of the industries in Detroit is in the state that is in. It's him. He's the reason why crack and all this other stuff as it was out here. So I'm waiting for them to come out with the new crack under this dude. So where it was a Reaganomics, now it's Obamanomics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. Which is like nobody getting money except the people who always had the money. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They they are really going hard. And the so-called black community who have really the most, the least invested with the most risk. And now at a stage where we can really do whatever, you know. That's right. And they'll blame it on him. And they'll blame it on him. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So what they so they know that. <laughs> so they know that we are so passive, but we in the state where we will only pray on each other. So they'll set off some shit. You know what I'm saying? And then blame it on, and then blame it on the dude, and then and then just be like, nah, he's doing that. Like I, like we said a couple of shows, I think on that same show you talking about, we talked about how they want to go back to the borders. We talking about how they right. start right. for that too. That's right. You know, and that's the, these are signs that the World War Six thing is already in play. 
they right. already like I when I when I read that, you know I think it was Reuters that since that Iraq has been bombed every day since nineteen ninety one to now, you know what I'm saying? It's like that is insane. That's not a that's not a world to generate and children are still being born in that. They didn't they that thing is so you know, who knows what that's gonna be later. But regardless of that what it is now, you know, is a operation. Exactly. A jump off point if they just have to bounce out, out of here real quick. Yeah. You know? And but yeah, if, if, big. And, and I wanted to ask you, like you said, when you just mentioned that reported in Reuters, if they've been, like you said, since 1991, that would mean that the Iraq would now, so they drop more bombs on Iraq than they drop on Laos. Yeah. Because at one time, wasn't Laos the, the most? Yes. Wow. And then due to knowledge to this, talking about Laos, they're in America, and that, that whole, you know, scam, um, the whole Vietnam War came off based on an event they called the Gulf of Tonk- the Gulf of Tonkin, right, mm-hmm. in Southeast Asia, and that the pretense in the war was that the Gulf of Tonkin, the the SS whatever, was fired upon, and the ship sank, and that was the pretense for the United States to go in against um, Ho Chi Minh. It was either Ho Chi Minh or Shanghai Jack, one of them. So they go in and set that off. But the thing about it is the ship was never fired on by the Vietnamese. It was fired on by this admiral on the other on the other ship, right? This admiral um lived in a place, uh, was stationed at a, a place or was initially serviced in a place called Lookout Mountain. Lookout Mountain is connected in the upper hills of Hollywood, which is a place where a lot of these Hollywood actors do a lot of the government films that the regular people in the world don't see, a lot of the you know, like sex films and a lot of that other crazy stuff. They'll never really talk about the stuff they do up there. So long story short, this guy was part of a group of officers who had children who in the 60s all flooded the place that we call, that they today call Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon, Malibu, Orange County. Um, uh, there's another place, uh, Napa. All of those places were ritual, satanic, were under the jurisdiction of the Pentagon. And all of those children that came during the whole 60s thing who were products of the Vietnam War, that was really a fiction created by this admiral whose name was Morrison, who had a son named Jim Morrison, you see what I'm saying, who was the satanic prince who married uh, Patricia Kennedy in ritual, right, who was a part of the grand, let's say, uh, body of the Cavendish house that is one of the high families in the whole thing. They're the ones that Elizabeth's got to give money to, stuff like that. And the Kennedy family is like their American sacrificial version, you know. So all of this was the precursor to what led to what happened in the 80s. So the fact that this dude is doing the same thing, the new Vietnam, see, is Iraq, see what I'm saying? The new Gulf of yep. Tonkin was 9-11. You see what I'm saying? Right. The new, wow. um, what you call it, um, rock band or whatever, or music that was concurrent during this war now is hip-hop, you see? Yeah. Who all now dress in military fatigue and give each other salutes because they're all in the army. You understand what I'm saying? When you look at the back of the hip-hop 
album, you see an FBI sticker. That means that this thing is protected by the FBI. The FBI only protects that which it is sanctioned to protect by the government. Therefore, the hip-hop industry is used as a military application for control. Yeah. So in the 80s, you know what I'm saying, again, you had the whole rape, the whole Iran-Contra thing. In the 90s, excuse me, in this time now, you got the whole stimulus thing or the whole, excuse me, the Bin Laden thing. See, whether that happens or not. There always has to be a mirror scandal or before that it was the birth certificate thing. Right. I, I read somewhere that once once a government starts to control by by fear, they can't let up. That yeah, they can't, can't stop. Decreasing. It can't be decreasing. Right, it can't stop. So now it's like we're at the asinine and absurd. You know, if anybody yeah. with a clear level thinking, you know, um, of course everybody on the call and all the brothers and sisters on the chat, you know, we definitely uh, – We've all lived a life that led us to think outside the box and know that there's more. But but now you, it's it's almost it's almost it's worse than a bad movie. You know what I mean? That's exactly what it is. It's Scarface gone wrong. It's like the right. whole the whole premise of everything. This is why you know Pacino is one of the biggest Satan satanic people in the in the game. So is De Niro. So is he, you know yeah Nicolas so, Cage too. All of them. Yet he's mm-hmm. one on the Coppola family that's attached to the Cavendish family, that's attached to the Clinton family, that's trying to go against and do shit to show the alternative version. That's why I urge everybody to see this movie, Drive Angry, that he just mm-hmm. did. Deep. Okay. Real, to the point where they're talking about Baron Somdi. They said, who do you think you are, Baron Somdi? Anubis? You know what I'm saying? Wow. They had no shit like 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 wow. They got a agora symbolism in it, drinking wine from the from the top of skulls, which is the skull, right? That they should, okay. Remember the chick that got shot in the head, Kathy Gifford. Yeah. The right side of her, they had to cut out a whole portion of her skull on the left side, right? Uh-huh. And to let the brain swelling go down, and then put the skin back, oh, put a plastic cover the skin over it. So it's really just her brain is out. She walking around with her brain exposed. But you better believe they did a ritual where they started drinking some wine or whatever out the top of that skull, because that's part of the ritual. Like they talking about this chick might run for Congress in two years. This is how deep <laughs> they have projected themselves in the mythos, where people are going to vote for this. this who will obviously be a robot by that time, or cyborg, right? <laughs> Some shit. Yeah, and that's people right. Will vote yeah, for that. yeah, and people will vote for that because they are uh, sympathetic of the fact that she was blasted in the head by the same people who who um she worked for. That's right. You know, so this this eighties push is really a Saturnian push a Saturnalia push, you know, a so-called satanic push to create a situation where we inherit the negative aspects of all of the wickedness they've done in the world by joining up with them at the end time to defend ourselves from the fictitious alien invasion that they want to try to impart on the world within the next two and a half years. But the fake alien invasion is the precursor to the real mama papa invasion of the real us that's vastly approaching here under classified G one nine or E L E N I N which is a globular cluster of matter that is moving <laughs> in a in a straight trajectory towards this center of space. <laughs> he did. So these things, whatever they are, or whatever they are, whether they're us or not, again, are physical representations of non-physical realities that we have perpetually created that we are now 
about to encounter physically. You see what I'm saying? And because the level of mental application has risen to the point that you can literally walk inside of a computer program and have the world and everything around you, which means that we've reached the level in which magic, science, theocracy, religion, finance are all the same thing. Therefore, soon there will be no need for money and things like that, which is why these niggas want to flip a new type of currency. Because this experiment has reached its course. Right. Right. That experiment means the Yakubian thing. That whole thing is done. And the point is the, 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 the Darwinian perspective of the strongest survive is representative of not the physical attribute because he based all of that shit on reptiles. So he based all of human civilization on reptilian function, i.e. the reptilian section of human consumption and not the soul. You know what I mean? Right. So everyone that conforms to that, which is Western society, then is insane with the same insipid view that science is more important than God. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or God is more important than science. When one when one and when both are the same thing. Yeah, you, you can't, can't have one love without the other. other. That's what I'm saying. When you get to the level of oneness you, you already know. That's right. That oneness is a multi dimensional, multi spherical reality of patchwork around you that you whatever you choose to invest in, you can be the best of who you are in that cipher because you're not conforming yourself to what the present stagnant reality views as real. That's why you lose friends because they can't, people who are not really on some, I want to have a greater human experience are only going to want to be with you to a certain level, you know? Right. And especially once they see you're doing things that that they definitely do not want to participate in, it has, it, it, the truth comes up really quickly. Yeah. Well, things that once you do it, they'd be like, oh, I could have done that. Or when they see you do it, they should be like, oh, yeah, I could do that. That's nothing. And then they get involved in it and get in it and they realize that it's more to it than they think. And then you are now living the life of what you think this person's life was when they were invested in this specific specific uh, routine. When if you would have just sat down and talked to them, they could have put you on or maybe you could have worked together to do it. Right. No, you want to just get all the light. You want to just be the one that everybody go to and look at as the one that got it. And everybody else who's not doing it like that is whack. Or anybody else that is not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is like this, or anybody that's dressing like this is that. All that shit is is white man shit. All that shit has nothing to do with the overall point of reality. If again, if they wear skinny jeans and that's keeping them from shooting each other on the corner, then that's great. <laughs> Long as they don't try to make us, you know, make you wear skinny jeans. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what you know, right. Like, they just come to the level of, you know, long as it doesn't infringe on They want so much. They'd rather wear those jeans and dance and all of that with girls and all that. That's great. That's what they're supposed to do as, as kids. We're not supposed to understand how they dress and all of that type of shit. What we think they that should symbolize is something totally different to them. That's why in, in us being from that hip-hop generation, we're the only generation in history that could listen to a song for one second and know if the whole shit is whack. <laughs> That's the truth. We did that. We did that. Nobody else <laughs> in history has achieved that level of musical mastery where I could listen to You're right. not even a come second that shit of is a song and know if that shit is whack or not. There's no 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 classical chain. I could do that to any type of music because hip through hip hop it allowed me to actually tolerate listening to opera and 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 Wagner 
and and um, Yalstein and all of this other shit that I really wouldn't pay attention to if Premier didn't put it in the beat. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's right. That's right. I was I was having a discussion about that. How even I remember when I was growing up, you know, we we had music appreciation, and although it was music yeah. that that we probably would never have played at home in our house, it still brought in your listening palette. So when we did make music and we, we thought about adding that, uh, you know, Sonny Rollins or that Charles Mingus or, you know, mm-hmm. we, we we would call on them, the, the great ones, to add, and, and put that energy into our sound. That's what I'm saying. We would create a whole new song. I would take the beat from Funky Drummer. i add a little substitution from James Brown to it. I take a bass line from 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 uh Mingus and then I put a put a piano from Thelonious Monk on it. Monk. Oh, yeah. There you from, go. From uh uh Coltrane on the hook and shit. And then put a put a uh eight oh eight on it. That's a whole joint. That's 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 my childhood. That's every I will I used to make pause tapes where you used to <laughs> listen to a a, a a half of a beat and then tape it and then retaped it to create a whole section of song or beat on it to rap over. That's right. Why you have white kids don't know about over. that. Man, well, I, I know you got some other callers. I really appreciate you taking the time. Like I said, I, you, you know, man, I'm, I'm like I said, I, I, I can't do nothing but support you because you, you helped me in so many Thank ways, you. man, just listening to you, King. And uh, peace you. to your, your wife and, and little Lamore. And... Uh, you know, uh, and like again, it's always a pleasure, man. Always. Well, King, thank you for calling, man. I appreciate it. Bless to you and your family. Speak again, thank you, brother. Oh, peace. Yeah, man. One kid don't know nothing about that. Pause tapes. Well, man, I could have been talking about hey, it. How you doing, Queen? Peace. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. This is us again. Is it you again? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, we, we had another we, question. Well, we actually did. Um, <laughs> that's funny. We actually did, so maybe that's why we got connected again. Um, we wanted to ask one question about the fifth dimension. I know um, Blair, Blair had said, and um, Delba Blair, we listened to him sometimes. He had said that December 21st, um, 20, what, oh, now, now, yeah, no, 2011, actually, because he said now we're in 2012 events, so he was saying that we're supposed to be going into the fifth dimension, so we wanted to know, what do you think, on, you know, what's your um, take on that? Uh, it's, it's, it's real um, simple, it's like we're, we're the beginning is. You know what it's like? It's like being in a car, and up way up ahead is like a like a bridge or like a tunnel, you know? And mm-hmm. as you're getting closer to it, the tunnel gets bigger and bigger. It's just that this tunnel is the size of a universe, you know what I'm saying? And it represents the crossing of a galactic, of a galactic plane. Some say the elliptic of the galactic plane is what's actually happening, meaning that you have, let's say, universe A at the top, which is the fictitious universe. Then Mm -hmm. under that, you have universe B at the bottom, which is the real universe. We, the planet Earth, will be at a cross-section in the Milky Way sphere where we'll be in the middle or crossing into the what they refer to as the underverse or the great hereafter. Mm-hmm. Astronomically. So on Earth, there will be physical results of this grand occurrence that mm-hmm. also symbolically represents a crossing of the Hebrews because Hebrew means people from across the river. The river in masonry will represent the... River Jordan, right? But mm-hmm. the real river they talk about is the river between the hemispheres of the brain, meaning that this occurrence 
is supposed to trigger a form of uni hemispherical thinking, meaning the bonding of both sides or the 98% of the brain that has been under the illusion of reality is about to come online and interact with that 2% to become 100% of whatever you are in your soul. Okay, no, because as the days go by, we just like, we just be feeling like we're tired of this, you know, tired of this yeah. nonsense and what's going on in the world, yeah. and we just like, you know, yeah, waiting yeah. for the this to become heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, yeah, it's, you gotta it's, take, like, you gotta remember, this. you'll forget to eat and shit. You'll forget to like, <laughs> like, do like basic human stuff. You become so looking forward to the coming that you can lose focus of the now. So Mm -hmm. it's best to live in the eternal moment of the coming, meaning to exist in a space where you're there when you need to be, but not when you're not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You... Do what you say what you need, but don't necessarily need to say certain shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Facebook is a type of devil that when you go on it, you'll see certain shit that people say, and you know it's who and why it's directed and stuff like that, and it makes you want to comment. You know what I mean? Which means it's an ego. It means it's an ego demon in that shit. Yeah, that's why that's we don't program. need to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's programmed to feed on on um people who get pissed off at phony shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to know when you're on that that it's also an operation in which you're being viewed. Every website that's ever been on and anybody trafficked and everything that you've ever looked at on, and all of that is cataloged under your file. Mm-hmm. There's a file for you under Washington, D.C. There's a file for you in the Pentagon. There's a file for you in the Vatican. And there's a file for you in um, the Black Books in Bavaria. Mm-hmm. And this is the, the cross-section of reality. But we as black people, we don't believe, we believe that this type of shit is not real. Yet this type of shit is what this, reality that we exist in. We don't exist in a capitalist society, a communist society. We live in a feudal society. So this is like the Knights of of Europe and shit. This is why you have a royal wedding like you did in the 80s. To to show a false unification of this fictitious, decrepit bloodline that's blood-sucking the planet. Mm -hmm. It's like it's having sex with Mother Earth on it on a period and then drinks the blood. It, it's horrible, these people. Mm-hmm. Yet they don't fuck with me directly. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> people mm-hmm. that fuck with me be a regular everyday people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, well, you know, be safe and and thanks for the for the call. That's a great question. Okay, same. Same to you, and thanks a lot for everything. Thank you. Peace. 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 You want Super A Radio? Hello? Hey, what's up, brother? What's going on, brother? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, this is the first time calling in. I've been, uh, you know, checking you out for quite a while. You know, I started off on... Uh, MySpace, and that's how I learned about you and everything. You know, you've been very inspirational. You know, I love I love the message that you're giving out to the people. I got a couple of questions for you, brother. Um, I know you have your Juris Doctorate, correct? Juris, yeah, Juris Jurisprudence. Yeah, yeah. What's your issue on sovereignty and how to get your sovereignty back as a black man and a black woman in America? Um, the first thing... I would do first is to create a legal delineation between yourself and the actual uh, corporate entity created at the time of birth. You're a straw man, right? 
right, thereby becoming a uh, beneficial owner, authorized representative, whatever of it. Now, from that yeah. point, some more say that you need to rescind everything and get rid of it. Um, I think you can do that, but at the same time, legally, to me, it leaves a, le- a loophole open for them on the back end where they can come back and say, well, how could you rescind something that you don't really, you was never really sovereign because how could you rescind because something? Because basically your sovereignty you was given up the minute you were born and your birth certificate was signed right. by your once, mother and your father. Once you, once you rescinded it, you how could you rescind something that you didn't create? Yeah. We didn't we don't own the birth certificate because we didn't create it. Therefore we could never necessarily own it. That's why the, the terms that they use that's applied to people who are holders of it are things like holders, representatives, uh beneficial owners, because we didn't create it at the time. They created it as a means to interface with us. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Because we have been under the assumption that they used it as a means to take advantage of us. The taking advantage of us happened over time. But in the initial inception, them doing it was a means for them to protect themselves from the fact that they know that they owe us all of this shit from setting up the shit or giving them the ability to administrate for us in the first place. But because we fell out with ourselves, the government became non de jure or non operati de jour, which then forced them to stand in as stewards and then they created a system of perpetual lies to enforce their jurisdiction by keeping us mentally dead. Exactly. To the point that we to come up began to use or adopt the straw man's as real names. When in actuality these are names of corporations that were set up at the time of the birth to allow the into the which is why they always, I'm well, sorry to, to, start to uh, interrupt, but that's why they, they uh, all your legal documents and everything always come in all capital letters. That's right. So essentially, and that's the straw man. The straw man UCC thing, the UCC is actually like a limited liability partnership. Well, I think it should be looked at it like that if you're not trying to rescind everything. Because, like I said, the loophole in rescinding or getting rid of it in a, let's say, uh, aggressive manner would then bring unwanted attention at a time, but also it would create a system where now that the fictitious interface that was there to interface directly with you is gone, we don't have a national government in place to the point where it is recognized in the world. It's recognized amongst us maybe or parts of it, but it's not universally recognized to the point where we got an army or anything else. Therefore, the sovereignty issue then becomes a case-by-case basis. You see what I'm saying? So until something is established where a console, a grand console can be created or a grand senior can be appointed in which everybody's jurisdiction agrees that this jurisdiction represents all of us, then take that to the world court and then get that the stamp on it, because we already got that with the Ouachita, but that is still fractured. We got that with the MST, but that's fractured. We got that with the Chemites and certain other groups, but they're fractured. So, eventually, this is the best time for us to be able to flip something like that. You know, but once, so, in rescinding, my point, though, is in rescinding the straw man thing, once you take that away, let's say openly like that, now they got to deal with you directly. But a corporate entity doesn't really need to know your nationality. They don't really need to know nothing necessarily human about you. That's what the corporation ship was set up for, for it to talk to that and for it to charge that for what it wants and for you to just let it happen because you are not, you are held in a, a non-response indemnity from that. So all you got to do is just sign shit. Because this is all an agreed upon fiction to keep their system going. But what they do is they force brothers to believe that they are the paper, they are the name, and therefore they tie the name to the jurisdiction. So they lock you up in one place, and then because they flip the uh, somebody by the barn, let's say in Texas, you in New York, 
they got to move you to, to lockdown in Texas. Then somebody else buy the bond in, in California, then they move you out there. And somebody else buy it in New York, then you come back to New York. Are you talking about on the federal government level or something? On both. Or just on the, in general? Or, well, on the federal government specifically. On the state government, it's not really like that. But on the federal government, they'd be more on it like that. Yeah, like right. uh, another thing that I was concerned with, like uh, say you get involved in some type of legal issue and there are charges filed against you and things of that nature, and you wind up, uh, basically from my understanding, the only way a person can be locked up and imprisoned is if they give up. You know, well, basically you got to agree to be in prison uh, through your sovereignty. You've given up your sovereignty for citizenship. Well, yeah, I, they, I don't know exactly they, how it they, works, but. They, they, the police are the policy officers. You sign a policy, and they are charged to check you to make sure you're following the policy. That's what a taxpayer is. It's somebody who pays for their own oppression by people <laughs> exactly, who are not exactly. as smart as them or people who who were, were preyed upon by the greater population. A lot of police officers and, and army brats and stuff like that were all come from abuse and stuff. You know what I'm saying? For a harsh situation. Yeah. So there's always some form of, of ritual abuse behind the motivation that pushes people into certain orders which then locks them down conscious wise. That's why eventually they become um party to it. The, the yeah. school who step out of door mentality, I, I don't really see that popping off like that no more. <laughs> so when people tell me, you know, they do stuff like that, I, I don't really see nothing like that happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, another quick question. All right, now I was watching, looking up some stuff on the Internet not too long ago, and uh, they were talking about, I think it was a satellite Cassini, and it was talking about, uh, I don't know if that's exactly the right satellite, but uh, uh, it was doing some observations of the one of the moons of Saturn. And they were saying that they mm-hmm. saw this big uh, spaceship uh, that was orbiting yeah. the moon, and it was there were yeah. were uh, like uh, smaller spaceships going up and down, you know, from the from the uh, from the moon surface to that big spaceship. And now the uh, yeah, NASA has uh, blocked out all of the information on this. It's all classified information. You've heard about this. What do you know about it? Yeah, I've seen I've seen stuff on YouTube with it, you know, and, and yeah. stuff from uh, different underground sites that uh, put stuff up. And plus, a lot of the old records and stuff, books that I've, like I said, they want to pop off, eventually want to pop off some type of alien invasion scenario. So, so this has nothing to do with the supposed return of the Elohim and things of that nature? Definitely. Or this is just some stuff that they're creating or whatever? It's a cover. There's going to be a cover one, and then there'll be a real one. The real one will be more of a spiritual experience. The the cover one will be more of a physical like battle L A type experience. Oh, you know what okay. I'm yeah. All but right. they both might be happening simultaneously. I don't know. But I do yeah, know. Yeah, well, yeah, you know that was something I was thinking too. You know that uh, a lot of this stuff is all going to coincide together. A lot of this so called fake stuff, along with what's going to really be the real stuff, is going to go down. So all yeah, going to coincide about the same time. Eleven nine eleven. They ran 22 drills all at the same time. One of those drills being a plane being flown into the United to the Twin Towers. So yeah, it's all they already stuff. put it in the scenario. Yeah, when you look yeah, at the trial the run was plane, the one was supposed to, that supposed bombing that happened what, was like three or four years before the actual bombing of the uh, World Trade Center, where the yeah. where the planes crashed into it. But they had to yeah, stop I in the uh, yeah. So a, a plane crashed in Park oh. Slope in the 60s. I remember. I I've seen the reports on that. Just like the um, other ones that happen with the with the uh, predictions, like when you look at the the letter, uh, the trench coat mafia dudes, it was the same thing, you know. Um, yeah, the, uh, they talked about flying planes in the buildings. They've been putting this in the constant for years, but regardless, it's all a op, you know what I mean? And we're we're training ourselves spiritually to understand the subtleties to be able to, inshallah learn the difference, and stay above the madness, you know. So thank you for calling, my brother. All right, brother. Peace and uh, blessings to you and your family. You as well, man. Be safe. Peace.
That's it. So, yeah, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you Monday night. Uh, to continue, you know. Um, also, thank you uh, for all the donations and all the support. If anybody wants to holler at us, holler at us at House of L at Hotmail.com. Or uh, you can check out a lot of our stuff on www.AsiaTheDuketeers.com or www.SagaAsad.com. Holler at us because we've got about eight months of uh, online classes that we've been doing with uh, members of the Superhero family as well as others. And uh, we... we we got to promote as much as we can to be able to contribute and also to be able to have something that hopefully we can all masterfully employ ourselves, you know, because this is what it's coming to. So in that, uh, look for the different products and stuff we got coming out, as well as uh, we will support whatever it is you have coming out. If you have anything popping or whatever you'd like to make an announcement about, just let me know, email it to me, and uh, I'll do so. Um, thank you. And uh, please support everybody, support the real. And inshallah, we'll speak again. Peace.